Hey YouTube, it is slightly snowing. As you can see, and why the hell would I be out in this shit? Well, we'll find out in just a minute. I'm about to get home, I'm gonna settle in, and then we're gonna make a video. Hey, what's up YouTube? We're obviously inside now. Uh, it's still blizzarding like a mofo outside. You can see all the snow in my window. I'm on the top floor, keeping in mind, so that is, uh, just what's been blown into my windows. Uh, why was I out in a fucking blizzard for God knows what reason? Well, uh, if you've been following this channel, you know I probably need a guitar intervention, to be super honest with you guys. Um, uh, yeah. So why was I out? Well, it was to go pick up another guitar. Uh, to be fair, it's one of the last ones that I've been looking for. Uh, I like to say I'm a bit of a collector, so I've got... Uh, it's nothing vintage, mind you, but I mean, I've got pretty much most of the models from Fender that I like, and I've got my two PRS models that I really like. Uh, so what do I have? I've got my Mustang, I've got my Jaguar, I've got a Strat. Uh, I've got my single cut PRS and I've got my custom 24 PRS. The two fenders that I was still missing and that I really want to get eventually. We'll see if it ever happens, if I get everything that I wanted. Hopefully. Still plenty of time, hopefully. Uh, but what did we go get today? Today we got one of those two. Is it a Telecaster? Is it a Jazzmaster? Let's find out. Don't mind the jogging pants, my jeans got soaked in the blizzard, and uh, these are warm and they are comfortable. So what did we get? What did we get? Well, it's a hard case, and it is a Fender hard case. So what did we get? We finally got our Jazzmaster. And uh, I'm just going to put this back down, and we're going to talk about it, and I'm going to rant a little bit. I'm realizing I forgot to check the frets when I went and tried this out and looked at it, but all the frets are perfect, so I am happy. So what is this? This is a Fender Jazzmaster. Actual Fender. Fender. And uh, it is a one that is made in Japan. Not crafted in Japan, made in Japan because this thing is from, it was made in the late 90s, early 91, judging by the serial number. Uh, the serial number starts with K, with one, two, three, four, five, six, digits, uh, which denotes a crafted in Japan fender uh, that was either made in the late 90s or early 2001s. Uh, if it would have been L, it would have been 91 to 92. That is directly from the fender website. Um, I spotted this on a used site here in Canada. Let's try and get the cam right here. Uh, used site in Canada, I spotted this. Uh, I've been looking for a while. Uh, I came into some money because uh, those that follow the channel, I sold my HTC Vive. I just wasn't using it enough and I just figure before more um, VR headsets come out and before someone beats them to the quality and everything, uh, sell it for as much as I could now. I wasn't really using it to be honest with you guys, it's just, uh, it was something that uh, when I'd sit down and wanted to play a video game, it was like, I'm sitting down, I want to play a video game, I don't want to have to move my chair out of the room, move my exercise dumbbells out of the room, clear everything so I could move around, configure the audio because the audio would never pick up properly, put on the headset, turn on the headset, half the time it wouldn't work the first time, I'd have to reboot my computer. It was just, it's fun, don't get me wrong, but anyway, it's just, it was a hassle, I wasn't using it, so screw it, sell it for what it's worth as much as I could now. 
and uh, I wanted to get either a Telecaster or a Jazzmaster. And uh, like one of my friends said, I've been talking about Jazzmasters and I just sound, I guess I sound really excited when I was always mentioning Jazzmasters. So he's like, just go ahead get the Jazzmaster. And uh, to be honest with you guys, the Jazzmaster is obviously going to be the more expensive of the two. Uh, now, a bit of a Fender rant. Why did I go with a used 1991 made in Japan one? Uh, this is my opinion. I think a lot of you are going to agree with this, but when it comes to Fender, you've got different ranges of quality. You've got your US quality that's all the way up here at the top. Then right below that, you had Japan. Uh, there's a reason you don't see any brand new made in Japan stuff sold here. Uh, unless it's like a limited edition kind of thing that they were already making and that it, I guess it was just easier for Fender uh, to get a whole bunch shipped from Japan instead of figuring out the production for them and doing them here. Uh, an example is like my Kurt Cobain Mustang that is also crafted in Japan because it's newer. Uh, but notice, unless it's used and it's old, you're not going to find, or someone imported it, but you're not going to find any crafted in Japan Telecasters, Stratocasters, and stuff like that. Why? Uh, again, just my opinion, but I think, and I'm pretty sure I'm right, it's because Fender was selling more of the Japanese ones because, like I said, American quality, Japanese quality, for a giant fraction of the cost. Now, uh... If you got US and you got Japan, and I've got Mexican ones, so like keep that in mind, but US, Japan, Mexico, and then Squire all the way at the bottom. Well, actually, Squire's kind of just a little bit under the quality of a Mexican. And uh, yeah, uh, I don't understand it, and I don't understand Fender's new pricing range. Uh, it used to be in the past years, and that changed this year, you could go get a Fender American Strat, uh, plain, no bells, whistles for like 1,200, 1,400 Canadian. Uh, then if you wanted all the bells and whistles, you could go get the Fender Deluxe Stratocaster. You paid a bit of a premium, but you got what you paid for. Uh, this year, uh, especially when it came to the weirder, less produced models. Uh, yes, they brought back that you can get American-made Jazzmasters. Uh, they've been making the Vintage 65 for a while now. Uh, I don't know how much that is in the States, but here in Canada, they are over $3,000 for a Jazzmaster. Uh, and then this year, they brought back uh, affordable American Jazzmaster in the Pro model. To me, and again, my opinion, what makes a Jazzmaster? Well, it's these pickups for one, which the Pro does have. Granted, uh, the floating trim, which again, the Pro has. Volume and a tone, a three-way, and the rhythm lead circuit. What did they do with the Pro model? Well, they stripped out all of this Moved a three-way up here. So what you get is a volume, a tone, a three-way, and the two pickups. Uh, now, for those that aren't aware and don't follow Fender that closely, that's not the first time they had done that exact Jazzmaster. Uh, that was, I think they stopped or they started, I don't remember, but around the 2012-ish mark, they had put out a American-made Jazzmaster Special for about a thousand two Canadian brand spanking new. Uh, it had the same, just the three way up here, a volume and a tone, the two pickups, and they'd removed the trim and just put in like a Gibson style uh, tunematic and a stop tail. But it was the way to get an affordable, uh, let me just move the mic. It was the way to get the affordable Jazzmaster made in the US. Uh, now, that was 1002. Uh, the uh, pro model of the Jazzmaster this year for 2017, which again, no circuit, just the baseline three way, the uh, knobs and the pickups, plain simple. 
stripped down features basically to me it's not a jazz master uh they want two thousand dollars canadian for it uh now so if you want an american jazz master you're going to be paying three thousand for the vintage two thousand for a pro those are the only two options then you end up with the Mexican ones. Uh, right under the Pro, you can get the signature Troy Van Leeuwen for 1008 for something that's made in Mexico. That's ridiculous. Uh, under that, they do make two uh, vintage models. One is a lacquered 60s and one is a uh, road-worn 60s. No options. They, one, the lacquered one comes in surf green with the white guard and the uh, road-worn just comes in sunburst with the typical tort uh, guard, I believe, with their, no, actually it's a white guard as well, so both white guard. Those are 1,004 Canadian. Uh, then, just under that, you've got the classic player. What's different on the classic player? Well, they put in the, uh, they removed the normal bridge, which most people end up changing anyway, because the bridges on these aren't fantastic. Uh, they put in a tunematic stop piece, they move this forward, but again, at least you've got all the normal controls. Now the problem with that, it's made in Mexico and they still want for the cheapest one that is still a jazz master to me, uh, they want a thousand one hundred dollars basically. So you're up to like a thousand three after taxes. Uh, and then they've got a whole bunch that aren't even jazz masters. It's just the body shape with two humbuckers and they want like $800 Canadian for that. Um, I'm just honestly done giving Fender my money until uh, they sort their shit out. Uh, I don't think it's acceptable for them to be charging the prices they are charging for US made. Uh, I remember a time when, yes, they still had the custom shop, they still had the deluxe, they still had the standard, but they always also offered something like the Highway 1 series for those that are old enough to remember that, or like American Made Specials, or stuff like that, that was a lot more affordable, and it was the price range for the, basically what's now made in Mexico. Uh, I don't understand how the quality of the Mexican ones are so bad. Uh, I, I said in my Strat video that like I was perfectly happy with that because I refused to pay two grand for a Strat. I'm still happy with it, but I had to put in a lot of work to get it where it is. And then the other day when I caught it in the sunlight, I realized the finish, one, has a whole bunch of black flecks under the clear coat, and two, there's solid lines through the wood that wasn't even sanded down properly. There's nothing I can do to fix that. Um, and the finish is just not, like, this is a mirror. This thing is from 1991, and it's still a mirror. I'm almost tempted to go grab it and try and show you guys, but yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's just not get this thing to fall, because it is pretty cherry. So, let's see if this will come up, and then we'll go back to the Jazzmaster and just finish this video. So look at that, the reflection, it's still there, but it's distorted. And now I don't know if you'll, it'll come up, but there are lines and I can feel them running my finger. There's one there, there's another one right there, there's one here, there's another one there. So it's not even like a split uh, half body that they glued together. If this is because they glued a whole bunch of pieces of wood, this is like a laminate that they just chunked a whole bunch. Is that going to affect the playability? No. No. Is there a reason for it? No. Like, come on. Get get your quality to where it should be when you're charging $800 for a guitar. Um, I've never seen this on a fucking Squire. Like, and I didn't notice this when I bought it, and there's no way that I could have done that, okay? There's no way anything here could have done that, like the temperature change or whatever you want to call it. Um, I just never noticed it till the other day when I had it at an angle and I was working on it and I'm like, oh, I guess it's sturdy. Wait, I can feel those. Um, but yeah, made in Mexico quality. Um, that is as good and as low as I can get the action on this thing. Let's go back to the Jazzmaster.
Look at how low that is compared. Now, I think it's because I'm going to have to end up shimming the neck on the Stratocaster. But, now do I not like the Stratocaster just because of the flaws? No, it's mine. I worked on it. I got it to where it is. It's fine. Um, do I agree with the pricing of them? No. Uh, keeping in mind, most, actually all Fender Strat, all Fender guitars, period, whether they be US made or Mexican made, you can watch the factory tour videos. The neck and the body are all rough cut by CNC. People will sand them down by hand. I think the tummy cuts and all that are all cut by CNC as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, so people just do the rough sanding from what I heard and what I've seen from many fact, I get obsessed and I just watch a whole bunch of factory tours for guitar makers on YouTube and during my lunch breaks, but anyway. Uh, the base coat is put on, the primer base coat is put on by machines. Uh, so all people are doing is really doing the final sanding on the neck and on the body. The actual color spray, which I don't know why they don't just get a machine to do it as well, especially for the solid colors. Um, and then the clear coat. How, how can you mess that up when most of the work is done for you? And how can you explain the quality difference? Um, and I was saying to one of my friends, I get the impression, and this used to be the case for cheap, cheap, cheap guitars back in the day. Uh, this was the case for Ibanez back in the day and why I've never owned an Ibanez. Uh, if you bought the cheaper ones, they wouldn't wait for the wood to dry enough. They'd just turn it into guitars as fast as they could, get them out the door. And yeah, your neck, if it's not, the wood's not fully dry, the neck's going to keep moving. And that's what keeps happening on every single uh, Mexican-made Fender guitar that I've bought. The Jaguar took two years for the fucking neck to settle. I've made plenty of videos about that. Uh, the Fender, it's not as bad. The Fender, the Strat, it's not as bad. Uh, but I am noticing that I've had to readjust the neck like two, three times now. Not every time I pick it up, it's still playable. It's just when all, you know, you just kind of feel like something's off. You double check your, your relief and you're like, huh, oh, yeah, look at that. It's a bit high again. Uh, so I'm hoping it won't take another two years for that to settle. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, I mean, the only thing you could, I guess, attempt is to stick the neck in a kiln to kind of get it to dry, but it's covered in lacquer and finish now, so I don't know how that would end up. Anyway, a bit of a rant, like I said, but so back to this actual thing and why I got it. Uh, why I got it? Well, I was looking at Mexican jazz masters and then talking to my friend, I kind of realized, like, do I really want to give Fender more money for more subpar Mexican-made stuff that they are asking way too much for? I was even to the point where I was debating, I'm like, oh, I'll just save up. I'll save up for like a year and I'll just give them the three grand for the uh, 65 vintage. But then I thought, why, why, why would I like help justify them charging so much for something and uh just out of the blue yesterday i just figured like uh, let me let me have another look on all the used sites around here see if by chance there's a jazz master and lo and behold uh i was quite impressed that someone was actually selling one period and i figured oh it's gonna be a mexican one whatever um but no crafted in japan did my research it uh, as far as I can tell, if you guys can see anything on this that screams fake, let me know in the comments. But like I said, the serial number matches. It does actually say made in Japan, which is correct for the 90s era. 2000-ish uh, was when they started changing that to crafted in Japan. Um, the, uh, the logo feels like... It's always been there. It doesn't feel like someone sanded it down and put in a fake logo. And uh, everything on it is exactly what I was expecting. Uh, down to the screw placement. Because if it's a squire, usually if someone doesn't change the pick guard and the part inside, I think the screws are a lot closer to the middle. Uh, you can watch videos about that if you want. 
but down to the color. The 91s were offered in candy red with the white pick guard, the cream uh, accessories on top, and it matches. And uh, the guy was asking 1004 which might seem like a lot for a guitar from 91. Uh, I talked him down to 1002 which I was a lot happier with because uh, if I was going to get a Mexican one, I was kind of aiming more towards the 60s one, and I thought, well, I'm going to have to spend the $300 or whatever it is, change the bridge to a mastery one. Well, oh shit, it already has a mastery in this. Mastery bridge, and I don't know if they came standard. It probably did, because back in the 90s when you bought a guitar for any kind of quality guitar, they always gave you a hard case. It came with a hard case. I don't know if he bought that separate or uh, if it came with. Uh, as you can see, uh, just going over it quickly, uh, it's going to need to be taken apart and cleaned. It is a bit dirty in spots that I can't really clean easily. Uh, like under the knobs here is just filthy. I'm going to have to, that even seems loose, so I'm going to have to fix that. The jack seems solid. The switch is fine. Everything works. I double checked all the electronics, which is something you should always do when you're buying a used guitar. Everything worked. Uh, the guy was also selling it. He also agreed to let it go for less because he said he had to get the bridge fixed because he says it rattles and vibrates and he had to take it to a luthier to get it fixed before he wanted to sell it. No, I mean, I'm strumming like way harder than I normally would. I'm not hearing any kind of rattle. Uh, and even if it did, I know how to fix that. Usually it's just the inner screw is a bit loose. You just have to tighten that up and you're good to go. Uh, what can I say? Uh, the only damage I can see on it, there's a little, I don't even know if these are going to come up. They're so minute. There's like a little ding there. Can't even see it. There's a bit of belt rash on the back. There's a scratch right there with that one you can see. There's a couple more dings down below. I don't know if these are even coming out. I don't think, yeah, you can kind of see. There's a couple of dings on the back. The front's got a ding or two. Um, to be honest with you guys, even if it would have been uh, completely wrecked, I still would have got it because A, I like Relic guitars, and this is from 91. Uh, there's a couple of dings on the back of the neck too, which I don't know how you would even manage to do, but there's a sizable chunk of lacquer missing right there. And I think there was another, and there's a bit of a divot here and there, and there's another chunk of lacquer missing there. This, like I said, this thing's from 91. This thing is uh, 15, uh, 25, 15, 25 years old. 25 or 26 years old, depending if, if it is actually 91 or a late 90s, but yeah. I love it. I am planning. If I can find, uh, if any of you have any ideas where you can find, uh, I'd love to replace this with a red shell guard with the white outline. Uh, I need to figure out if the American ones will fit on a Japanese. Uh, I might end up having to order a custom pick guard. Uh, I'd rather not spend that kind of money, but if I have to, I think I will, because I'm not a fan of this bright white guard. Uh, if you've never seen them, just Google uh, red Jazzmaster red pick guard. They usually have the ply, so you get the white outline around it too. It looks amazing. Uh, I also want to change these to the old school uh, witch hat knobs. And that's all I'm going to do to this guitar. I'm going to reset it up. The strings really need changing. These strings are like filthy. Uh, but I need to go get a set of, because apparently jazz masters take 10 to 46 standard. I like to keep standard string sizes on these. It's easier to remember afterwards what the hell strings you need to get. And my cat is being a dick. Um, it's easier to remember what string size to get rather than like, shit, what did I put on that last time? Go to the manufacturer's website, look up the strings, 
Or what I'm thinking I might end up doing is start making a uh, just an Excel spreadsheet with guitar tuning I use on it, size of strings, uh, make it easier when I go and uh, buy new strings. So this thing is going to need new strings and I'm going to have to see if I can get the uh, witch hat knobs and how hard it's going to be to get a guard. Um, my amps is not on. I might go do that quick and just give you guys some sound samples. So that was the bridge, middle. Neck. And that is full volume, full tone. Rhythm circuit. Oopsie. So again, full volume, full tone. Uh, let's see how this thing sounds with high gain, because I've not seen anyone do a video. Not tuned for it, but... I don't know about you guys, but I am liking it, and yeah. So there you go. A uh, bit of a longer video than I was planning, quite a lot longer video than I was planning really, and uh, sorry about the rant, but I guess I needed to get that out. Uh, so there you go, I am, it is now 8pm, I'm gonna edit this shit and go make myself a sandwich because I am starving. And uh, stay tuned, probably more videos about this thing. Uh, I did order, <laughs> and I swear someday I'm gonna stop fucking with this Stratocaster, but I did order one last thing uh, when I get it. There will be a video just to finalize. I keep saying finalize, but uh, finalize for now, the Stratocaster. But there you go. Uh, there you have it, the Jazzmaster. And uh, my personal opinion, stop giving Fender your money until they uh, fix their pricing. It's ridiculous. It's It doesn't make sense. Look at used ones. Uh, even the Mexican used ones I will vouch for more because if it's old enough and you play it, it's probably not going to move. The wood is settled by now. If you get something Mexican that's five years old, the wood is settled. Um, don't give Fender your money for new stuff. Their American line is ridiculously overpriced, and the Mexican stuff is just subpar. Uh, again, I said good things about it on the Stratocaster video, because honestly, yes, it was better quality for a slight increase, but uh, to do it again... I don't know, I think I would have just waited and found a used Stratocaster that I liked instead. Uh, so my my advice to you guys for uh, if you're looking for Fenders, if you're looking for Gibsons, don't give those guys your money. Look on the used market, you'll get a better deal. Their pricing is just out of this world and ridiculous. I will still vouch for PRS. If you're looking for brand new guitars, look at some PRS stuff. Because like I said before, you got Fender USA, Fender Japan, Fender Mexico, Squire. PRS, PRS USA, S2, SE. There's nothing wrong with any of the SEs. The cheapest SE I've ever picked up that's made in like Indonesia still felt great, still played great. Uh, 
my opinion again, it's just my opinion. Uh, everyone should have their own opinion. That's just mine if you don't share it. That's cool. If you love your American Fender that you bought in 2017, brand new, and you're in love with it, and you didn't mind spending the two grand, good on you. I just can't justify that. Uh, but yeah, there you go. I'm gonna stop ranting now because I could go on forever and I just want to go eat and play with this thing a little bit more.